to another edition of Pharmacy Chats. Today, I have some of our former students that are now residents at Baptist Memorial Hospital here in Oxford, Mississippi. Um, so I'm going to turn the floor over to Eric Pham, who's one of our current students, and then Eric will go to Dylan, and then we'll go to Brianna just to give you a little background of himself. So Eric, the floor is all yours. Hey everyone, I'm Eric Pham. I'm a second year pharmacy student from Olive Branch, Mississippi. Hey everybody, my name is Dylan Ware. I'm a actual pharmacist and um, I'm from Clinton, Mississippi. And I'm a resident at Babis Memorial Hospital in Oxford, Mississippi. Hey y'all, like Dylan said, um, my name is Brianna Waller. I'm also a pharmacist and pharmacy resident at Baptist in Oxford and I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Awesome, well, so Dylan and Brianna, if y'all can tell us a little bit about yourself, um, did, you know, why did you choose Ole Miss um, and what made you choose pharmacy? And did you do early entry? Um, well, I chose Ole Miss because they were the only, they had the only pharmacy program um, as far as like pharmacy school in Mississippi at the time. Um, also because I had heard about early entry when they sent me a letter in the mail because before that I really didn't know a lot about what pharmacists did and so when I got that letter my interest was peaked and um, I applied for early entry and I said I mean honestly I said if I got in then I would just go with pharmacy and I got in and here I am. I actually didn't end up um, on the early entry course my entire time. Um, I had switched over to pre-farm um, while I was an undergrad, but I've been at Ole Miss the whole time, and then I um, also did pharmacy school at Ole Miss as well, and I think it was a really great decision, honestly. So coming out of high school, I didn't know what I really wanted to do, and so my high school job was working at Nukes in Clinton, Mississippi, and I started community college at Holmes in Ridgeland, and um, another student in my class was actually a pharmacy technician at um, Kroger in Madison, and she asked if anybody wanted a job as a pharmacy technician. I was like, sure, you know, I want to do something in the medical field. Um, you know, why not? So I went and interviewed, got the job, and instantly, you know, realized that pharmacy was for me. Um, I love helping patients. I love helping, um, you know, them getting their medicines and, like, you know, seeing their their healthcare outcomes improve and just being so thankful for pharmacists and how, you know, we really do have an impact on their lives. So I worked for about three years there before transferring to Ole Miss Pharmacy School. Uh, like Brianna said, it is the only pharmacy school in um, in Mississippi until this until what a year ago. Um, Ole Miss Pharmacy School is ranked nationally, like number twenty. It's in the top twenty-five in the country. We have great professors. We have great faculty. Um, they love spending time with you, getting to know you, and they more most importantly, they love teaching you. Um, and really educating you to become pharmacists in the future. So, all right. So you mentioned some things of what drove you to go to pharmacy school. Um, for both of you, what are some things that made you continue um, pursuing pharmacy school throughout your time? Um, I agree with what Dylan said about um, how pharmacists have a really big hand in healthcare. Um, sometimes it's more of like a background hand or, you know, a hand that people don't even really know is there. But I really have loved getting to see the impact that pharmacists can have, like you said, on health outcomes. Um, for me, um, one of the things that really drove me, again, like you said, there are plenty of faculty members who would be glad to mentor you, kind of help you pinpoint, you know, what aspects of pharmacy really appeal to you. And I'm not just talking in pharmacy school, you know, um, you have um, your advisors and mentors when you're an undergrad majoring in pharmacy as well. And they also help me tremendously from everything from picking courses to um, kind of getting a better idea of what exactly I could do to um, either strengthen my chances of getting into pharmacy school or, you know, even just telling me more about what they do so I can have a better idea. So I think that um, the mentors that you have at Ole Miss throughout your course from undergrad and even continuing into pharmacy school can also play a big role because once you get in, then you see all the different types of pharmacy you didn't know existed, all the different roles that we can play, and then there's always somebody who's willing to encourage you or um, help you get to the next step or even help you determine what your next step is. So I say that feeling of support that you get from um, either upperclassmen or from um, mentors or faculty mentors and within pharmacy here is really, really instrumental. Y'all are both nearing your end of your residency, PGY1 years. Um, 
how did you decide that you wanted to pursue a residency? And then what are some steps that you uh, took to get to this position? Yeah, so I think for me, um, it wasn't until my P4 year that I realized that I wanted to do a residency. Um, one of my uh, preceptors, Dr. Uh, Danny Reish, uh, I had him for ambulatory care rotation. And throughout the month, he mentioned that, um, you know, I think you, a residency would do you good because I think you still need to learn and grow in confidence. Um, because at, at that time, I was only on my second rotation, and he kind of saw that weakness in me of, you know, I have confidence, but I need to be more confident. Um, and he thought a residency would allow me to achieve that. And, you know, looking back on it, he was right. And I'm so thankful that he um, that he really, you know, pushed me to do it, because um, if, he, if he didn't, I don't know if I would be um, as confident now um, as I would have been not doing one. I think one of my main motivators for pursuing residency was that um, although pretty much all types of pharmacy have a pretty significant clinical role, um, there are a nice amount of types right now that are either requiring or moving towards um, preferring residency trained um, pharmacists. And so really, I decided to do one to try to give myself as many opportunities as possible when trying to, um, you know, when I am actually working outside of being resident. But also I will say that um, in preparing for, you know, deciding if you want to do a residency or not, or just preparing in general, um, I think one of the best things you can do is expose yourself to different areas and get a better idea of what exactly is out there. Um, especially at this stage, I know that some pharmacists allow people to shadow them. I don't know how that's working now with all the COVID-19 and all that, but um, I know that that's always an option to talk to people about types of stuff that they do and try to see, if, you know, maybe what piques your interest or get or more information about it. But um, I think that was my main motivation for pursuing residency was there's just so many different options in pharmacy. I wanted to give myself the best chance to have a shot at um, a nice amount of them. So. Yeah, so I have interest in pursuing a residency in my future as well. And there may be students who don't know um, what you do as a resident. So could you give us some insight into your day-to-day -day life um, and your roles as a resident since you are a practicing pharmacist um, with the PharmD? So, and I'm sure Dylan can expand more on this, but um, when you're in pharmacy school, generally your fourth year is pretty much all rotations at different sites where you're kind of acting like a pharmacist, but you don't have a pharmacist license, so you're limited in what you can do. And then residency, I feel like, builds on that because you are still rotating through different sites, different types of pharmacy, um, inpatient, depending on what kind of residency you do but you are actually practicing under your own license with more of the responsibilities that come with it, um, more of the clinical judgment, and then also you still have support. Um, you have people behind you that can ask a lot of questions to if needed or that can guide you. And so I think that's what makes residency really good because you get exposed to so many different areas, but actually as a practicing pharmacist, and um, the first year of residency is generally more broad um, some people do inpatient, some people do more community-based, but it's still a pretty broad um, scope. And then if you do a second year, that's how you can specialize in things like pediatrics or um, critical care, and ICU pharmacists, things of that nature. So our day-to-day -day looks different depending on what time of the day, what month, what week it is, because we're in so many different places, but that's kind of what makes it exciting because, you know, no day is ever really the same. We're always getting um, so much good exposure that I might not have gotten had I not done a residency. Yeah, so kind of day-to-day, -day, like Brianna said, it kind of depends on um, the residency program. So our residency program, we have two required adult medicine months, two required central pharmacy um, type months, an ICU month, uh, two teaching and learning months, which is affiliated with the School of Pharmacy. So as a student, you will be interacting with residents. Um, through the teaching and learning program. Then we also have elective months um, where we can do like ambulatory care, um, infectious disease, um, any, any type of, um, you know, elective type like management leadership with the Baptist like leader, Jillian Foster, who is over the whole Baptist health system. She offers a rotation. So it's all, it all depends on which residency um, program um, you're at. But 
kind of day to day, we, so if you're in adult medicine, we look at patient charts, we review their lab values, we look at their temperature, um, we look at all their medications to make sure that it's appropriate. Um, if it, we also look at cultures, so if a patient's growing a specific uh, microorganism or pathogen, um, we have to make sure that what they're on is being uh, treated with the appropriate antibiotic. Um, so that's one thing that we do. So central pharmacy, we look at, or we verify every single order that comes through the pharmacy, uh, or that comes to the hospital, I'm sorry. Um, so any order that a nurse or physician or respiratory therapist orders, we verify um, everything to make sure it's the right dose, right route, right time, right patient, um, right documentation, because we're the final check of the medication going to the patient. Um, so as pharmacists, we have a huge responsibility in ensuring medication efficacy and safety. Um, so that's kind of, you know, central in adult medicine. ICU, we, uh, we round in the ICU unit. We um, discuss, you know, the, plan, the plans of care for the patients with the um, on-call physician, uh, the nurses, case managers, social work. Um, and just kind of get a plan of care for every patient patients in the ICU. So that's kind of what a day-to-day -day looks like um, for those type of rotations. And they all look different at different sites. It just depends on where um, the residency program is and what the program offers. Uh, my next question is kind of a two-part question. Uh, what is your favorite part of being a resident? And then what do you, what would you say is the most challenging part about being a resident? I think my favorite and the most challenging part are actually the same thing because what I love about it is what I mentioned before, how like Dylan said, you have some days where you're in clinic with ambulatory care. You have some days when you're in ICU, you have some days when you're verifying and checking in central pharmacy. But um, I think it's incredibly rewarding because you get to not only narrow down what your own interests are, but also what I feel like a lot of people don't think about is you're actually able to apply principles from certain rotations. They still apply pretty broadly throughout whatever type of pharmacy you um, end up practicing. But uh, I think the hardest part is probably um, switching from so many different sites um, because it can be information overload, but in the best way possible though, because like I said, pretty much everything you learn, you can apply to whatever aspect of pharmacy you go into. But um, Honestly, I think that residency is challenging because you're doing so many projects and you're doing research and you're doing topic discussions and all these things on top of trying to learn how to be a pharmacist. But I think you end up so much more well-rounded for it once, um, once it's over and you come out on the other side successful. For me, I think my favorite part is, like I mentioned earlier, continuing to um, build on confidence because as a pharmacist, you have to have confidence in the decisions that you're making um, because your, your confidence in decisions and um, thought process ease um, impacts patient care. So you really have to, you know, be confident and sure that what you're doing is appropriate. So I think that's what residency has given me almost at the end of it. Um, I really do feel 100% more confident as opposed to when I started July 1st of 2019 and now it's, you know, June 30th, a year later. Um, I think that's been the biggest um, you know, thing that I love about residency. I also like doing projects, research projects, um, medication use evaluations, and really being able to um, present data that is a problem and presenting it to, or finding data that's a problem and presenting it to um, pharmacists, physicians, nurses, whoever needs to see it. Um, and coming up with a solution to fix it. And as, and as pharmacists, we look at the medication use um, and we, can, we really do have an impact in, um, in decreasing trends of antibiotic use, uh, different things like that. Um, so that's really what I like about residency is just really being able to make an impact in all aspects of pharmacy. Um, my most challenging um, part is probably when physicians don't take my recommendations. Um, it's kind of hard to get them on board with things that I've found and, and they want to, you know, continue on a patient on antibiotic for a certain period of time. And, you know, it's time to, 
for the patient to stop antibiotics and de-escalate and they're like, no, no, one more day. Because if you stay on antibiotics for too long, you could end up getting adverse effects like Clostridium difficile, which is a GI infection. Um, and it can be, it can be life-threatening. So I think the hardest part for me is really getting physicians um, to accept my recommendations. Thanks for sharing those. So y'all both mentioned that you had to do research projects as a resident. Um, do y'all think it is something as during undergraduate years or pharmacy school years that people should um, look into research projects and get that experience beforehand? Because I understand that most, if not all, um, residency programs require a president uh, research project. I will say that I had very limited research experience when I went into residency. I mean, I participated in a project and, um, and data collection, but had more of a hands-off approach when it came to analyzing it. And I would say, although that's, you know, okay, and clearly, you know, it ended up being fine, I do think that it would be helpful um, for people considering it to have their hand in a research project prior to this, because like you said, um, pretty much just for the experience, so you won't kind of have to um, kind of spend time trying to figure out exactly how to do things. You can hit the ground running. And um, also, I think it makes it easier to come up with the research question as well when you have experience with the research. So no, I don't think it's necessarily you know mandatory, but I think it would definitely be beneficial. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily mandatory, um, depending on what you want to do um, upon graduation. Um, but I know most residency programs do require a research project. And I feel like the more that you get involved with different types of research projects and um, really building relationships with faculty at a school of pharmacy, or you may be working with other professors in undergrad to do research project or, you know, thesis, different things like that. I think that really just, um, it gives you a leg up on, um, you know, your residency year because you, you have prior experience of completing projects. So you kind of know the process of it, how to get IRB approval. So it's not like a whole new, um, you know, battlefield for you. You have prior experience. And I know that most, you know, residency programs, they do look for research um, on upon or when when you do apply for um, residencies the, the program directors do look at research experience to see if you have any of that and they are your score is your score is graded um, on whether you have research or not so like Brianna said it's not necessary but I do think that it is very beneficial and research ultimately improves patient care in one form or another so um, I think pharmacists should be involved in research. Uh, Dr. Ware, when you said the score is graded, what do you say is like other factors put into that that they look at? Yeah, so the, the application system that residency programs use, they look at um, they look at grades, they look at um, extracurricular activity, volunteer service, national, local, international presentations, um, work experience, um, research experience. Um, and they, you're also required to write letter, letters of intent. So why do you want to go there? Um, so why do you want to go to that program specifically? Um, because there may be 400, 500 pharmacy students applying to one program. And if you write a letter that doesn't stand out to them, they may just, you know, disregard it and not even, they may, they may, they may not even look at it at all based off the first paragraph. So you have to really catch them. Um, early on to tell why you really want to be there and you also have to um, have reference letter writers so it's really important as a student to build good positive relationships with faculty at schools of pharmacy because they were they will be the ones that will write you recommendation letters um, so the earlier that you can establish relationships with them and the longer that you um, build those relationships um, the more likely they are to write, to be comfortable writing reference letters for you. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind as you're approaching um, pharmacy school or any type of school, just always be positive and open-minded about um, everything because there's an opportunity to learn from everything. Um, and just really, um, like I said, just make sure that you do have those positive relationships with faculty. But that's kind of an overview of what uh, the, the application is. Um, one thing that also counts towards 
these kinds of things is your interview um, accounts pretty significantly. And that can actually apply to you guys as well because um, early entry, pharmacy school, you know, all these things require interviews generally. Um, and so one thing that I would just say is, you know, it's one thing to look good on paper, but I would never discount um, how your interview goes. So, you know, it's a nerve wracking experience, but it's just important to know that if you actually get an interview somewhere in residency, pharmacy school, what have you, just know that they're interested in you. And so they're looking to meet the real you and just, you know, don't try to stifle yourself necessarily and don't try to be what they want you to be. Just make sure that you're being your authentic self and just, um, showing them who you are. So um, I just want to piggyback off of what he said because the interview is also a part of that, but that also applies to different areas of pharmacy before that as well. So I just want to throw that out there. If they're interested in getting to know you as well and not just um, you on paper. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. Those were all great advice for someone who is interested in pursuing a residency and a day in the life um, for as a resident. Um, my final question is, do y'all have any advice for someone who is interested in pursuing pharmacy? I stand by what I said earlier about really trying to gain exposure to different types of pharmacy as well. But even if you don't, I think the pharmacy is a really great career to um, pursue, um, despite what you may or may not hear about the, the job market and what have you. There's always a role for pharmacists in the healthcare system, whether it's in re um, the community pharmacy, inpatient, in the clinics. Um, there's so many different types and we all have a role in patient care. It just really varies on how visible we are, but we're always advocating for the patient, making sure that they're getting, like Dylan said, the appropriate dose um, medication the way they need to, that final check, um, you know, counseling on the medication. So I think we play a really important role and I think pharmacy is a great career to pursue or consider in the medical field. Um, because we are really important players, but also um, if you are considering pharmacy, I would highly recommend it. I would highly recommend, um, you know, co continuing to try to be well-rounded um, with, you know, not just focusing on school, but also, you know, extracurriculars, maybe get involved in organizations that also take um, undergraduate members, as well as community service, which are all really good things, not only be on a resume, but also to give you good experiences um, to speak to and that can also help you professionally grow and inevitably um, help patients even more. Yeah, I'd say, you know, if you are really serious about the profession of pharmacy, try to get a pharmacy job as early um, as you can. So I know most, most pharmacies, I started Kroger when I was 18 um, and worked there for nine years before graduating. So I think just getting your foot in the door um, somewhere and learning the different types of pharmacy. So whether it's community pharmacy like CVS, Walgreens, Kroger, independent pharmacies, um, or trying to get a job in a hospital where you, you know, as a pharmacy technician or pharmacy intern where you uh, compound IV medications um, and deliver medications to patient floors. Uh, I think that's really important to kind of see what it looks like prior to pharmacy school. Um, or while you're in pharmacy school and prior to pharmacy school, just kind of seeing what the profession of pharmacy is like in different areas. So you can kind of see, okay, I like this area of pharmacy. Um, and then, you know, later on down the road, you may, oh, well, I, I'll, I'll apply for this job um, and see, it may be, you may be working at community and then you like, oh, well, I want to try an inpatient job. And then when pharmacy school happens your fourth year, you may enter a world that you've never even, you know, thought about other than institutional and um, community pharmacy. There's drug informatic pharmacists, there's so many different types of pharmacists um, jobs, you know, in the United States. Um, so that'd be my advice, because I know working at pharmacy prior to pharmacy school and before pharmacy school really helped me um, in the courses and the classes uh, of school. Because it, you know, you start you start to learn the processes of pharmacy. You start to learn about the medications that treat certain conditions, brand generics, things like that. Um, so that would be my advice. I just want to say I know that what we said has probably been a lot, um, but I just wanted to. Um, focus on the fact that we have been involved in pharmacy and pharmacy school for um, 
a nice amount of time. So, you know, all this stuff was gradual. You know, I expected to know all the stuff right off the bat. We've just really been immersed in it for a minute here. So just wanted to say, you know, if anything we've said has in any way intimidated you, um, just know that you learn these things step by step and that, you know, it, it takes time. So just don't be intimidated because while it can be a lot, it's really so rewarding and you learn so much and the, the patient care aspect is extremely worth it. So just want to throw that out there. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Waller and thank you, Dr. Ware. We are so grateful for you guys and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.